Hey guys, how you doing? This is John, Happy Console Gamester, and welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to take a closer look at the Gizmondo. This is a handheld that was released in 2005, had a ton of potential, it didn't really sell very well unfortunately. Because it didn't sell very well, it is a collector's item and it's fairly rare today. I did a review on this handheld way back on my channel, it was like the fourth review I ever did on this channel. And looking back on it, I'm like, you know what, I really want to redo a review on this handle because it's so cool and I know a lot of people have requested to see some more gameplay on it and learn a little bit more information about the Gizmondo. So I encourage you guys to sit back, relax, let's learn a few things about the Gizmondo. Thanks for watching. Here is the Gizmondo. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different in this review than I do in most of my reviews. I'm going to show you some gameplay first and then we're going to show you uh, the settings and the menu screen, all that good stuff. Show you this, the Gizmondo, the bad boy in action. Uh, and later on in this review, I'm going to talk about the history about the Gizmondo. If you guys want to know about that, stick around and learn more about that. So, we're going to power this thing on. This is the power button right here. It takes a little bit uh, to power boot up, so we're going to turn it on. And while it's booting up, I'm going to explain what these are buttons are about. So, you get your directional pad. This is not very responsive. I don't like the way it's designed. Uh, you know, it does work okay. It does its job. But they could have done a better job in designing that. These are your buttons. You got your play, your fast forward, rewind, stop. The reason they have that is because there's actually, it can play movies. Uh, but it works the same way as an X, Y, A, B button, etc. and so forth. Uh, these buttons here, they call them key buttons. This is your on and off. This is your alarm. This is your brightness. This is your volume. And this is your home button. So you can go back to home. Uh, and then these are your right, left bumpers here. Uh, and then you got these little nice little dents here. You can actually put your thumbs in. It's actually, it actually really handles very well in your hands. I will give them that. Uh, here is the camera on the back. It is a 3.6 megapixel camera. This system came out in 2005, March 2005, so it's not bad, pretty, pretty advanced back then. Uh, this is where your battery uh, goes in, it's rechargeable. Uh, battery lifetime, life, battery life on this thing is approximately six to eight hours. Uh, so in today's time, you know, it's definitely kind of not very good for back in 2005, it's not bad. Okay, so here is the menu screen. And you got basically you got your games, you can play movies. I don't have any movies loaded in here. Uh, now, oh, one thing I want to show you on the very bottom, it runs off of SD cards. This is the games. They're actually going upside down like that. Those are the programs, SD cards. And you can load movies and MP3s and music into that. This is your headphone jack. You got a mini USB cord here. This is your power adapter. Well, I got the, this particular version is the UK version. Uh, and I had to get, this is the power adapter. I had to get this special adapter here at uh, Radio Shack. And it actually runs, you don't need to work, worry about the wattages or anything, the volts or anything like that because the system is made to work on, on multiple volts, so that, that's pretty cool. Let's go back. So you can play uh, you can play movies. You can play music, I don't have any music loaded. You can do you can do messaging, so you can actually uh, text message other Gizmondo users. You had, a, there was a GPS and web feature on here as well, Wi-Fi. The GPS feature only was in the UK. Uh, never really, they didn't have a program in place in, in the States here. Uh, you have a camera and images, let's check it out. So we can take a, take a photo here. They had a couple cool games. One thing I want to mention, the games here were cool. They never really released them, but this had the technology to do augmented reality. So what, that, what I mean by that is there were games that they were going to release for it where you can see you know, what's here in real life, and then it would put images in the game, and it would, the images were, would work in the environment of what you see on screen. So you know, kind of similar to uh, the Sony Move. And how that works, you know, the eye, you know, Sony eye camera and all that good stuff, kind of very similar, but this is back in 2005. Let's take a picture. All right, so we got our pictures here, and this is pretty cool. So you can store a whole bunch of pictures on here. And you actually can text the pictures to your buddies as well, like you can today on, on today's phones. This thing is not a phone, though, and it doesn't take any video, unfortunately. Let's go back to the main menu here. You have your contacts, you can work as an organizer, you got applications. Alarm clock, calculator, currency converter, Bluetooth, it does have Bluetooth technology. We get the lights off, and I'm going to show you the first game. This is Motocross, Gizmondo Motocross 2005. Load times aren't too bad. This game was developed by Gizmondo. Okay, so we can go back to the main menu here. The cup, quick race. Ghost race, multiplayer options, quit. So, uh, quick race. I haven't unlocked any other bikes at this point, so check it out. And then there's different levels you unlock. Your controls.
The graphics are equivalent to like a PSP, PS2. Sounds actually pretty good. But you gotta be careful not to go off track here like I just did. I'm playing through camera, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to play and see. You guys can basically get the idea of this game. Pretty fun, actually. Check out the next game here. It's called Trailblazer. It's actually one of my favorite games for the system. Trailblazer, really fun game. Cedric F0 in this game. You guys enjoy this one. I like the music a lot. Gotta be careful where you go here. Now you just to finish the race without falling over or doing the quickest time. You can jump and stuff too. Up in the next stage. Uh, you have to muscle rubber here. It's hard. Those red things will make you slow down. Yeah, you guys get the idea. Pretty fun game. The last one I'm going to show you is Sticky Balls. It sounds like a bad porno, I know, but let's check it out. It's actually a really addicting game as well. Also developed by Gizmondo. Let's do classic game mode. There's different arcade, but let's do classic game mode. a whale. Hey, look at that. And you're supposed to match the colors together. So this is obviously very easy, but it progressively gets harder and harder. Finished. I think that's the all game as well, actually. Yes, yeah, so you can switch balls. They can definitely get the idea of the games here and how they play, but let's talk a little about the system now. I'm going to show you some other games I have for the Gizmodo. Sticky Balls just showed you. These games come in like a DVD case, and the, the games are just, this is the demo game that came with it too, so they just come in here and they come with uh, a case where there's two games as well, instruction manual. Trailblazer just showed you that, Gizmodo Motocross 2005. Toy Golf, this is a really fun game as well. It's like a mini golf game. And this is Classic Compendulum 1 and 2. These are actually still unopened. I haven't played these yet, so I'll probably keep them unopened for now. Okay, this is the box it comes with. Picture the Gizmondo itself. And the box opens up and you, you, you know the instructions, all that good stuff, okay? Now let's talk a little about the system itself. Okay, as I mentioned before, it came out in 2005. That's March 2005. It was uh, actually a UK. Gizmondo is a UK-based company. Uh, so it was found in the UK, March, and then and it didn't hit the States until October uh, of 2005. There was a total of 14 games released. I have six of those, but there's actually only eight of them that were released in the U.S. So not all the games that made it were released in the U.S. Uh, and it's the worst-selling handheld of all time. Only 25,000 of these things were ever made. Uh, and God knows how many of those were actually sold. The company that made the Gizmondo was actually called Tiger Telematics, not to be confused with Tiger Electronics, who also made the handhelds in the in the states and back in the 80s and 90s, so it's a completely different company. Uh, it was founded by Carl Freer, his last name is spelled F R E E R, and then he also worked with a guy named Stefan Eriksson. And Stefan, he's actually the guy who kind of screwed the whole thing up because he was actually part of the Swedish mafia. And in 2006, he actually totaled his Ferrari. Uh, it was a Ferrari Enzo worth two million dollars. And he ended, up, he ended up crashing that, got a DUI, and went to jail for a long time. So it wasn't so much 
that the Gizmondo necessarily failed. It was the executives and people behind it that really made it fail, uh, in my personal opinion. Okay, so the Gizmondo itself actually retailed in the UK for £229. They had a Smart Ads version as well that retailed for £129. So what's the difference between the Smart Ads and the reg regular version? Well, Smart Ads, and they kind of spelled it weird. They spelled it with two, uh, two Ds, so it was Smart Ads. Uh, and they did, it was a play on words, although some of their publications and stuff, they even misspelt it uh, to just 1D, which is interesting. But the whole idea was you could actually play the games, and before, when you go to the menu screen, they actually put, they load in advertisements on the menu screen, 30-second uh, ads, and you could only do like a maximum of three a day. Unfortunately, that thing never launched, so people who actually ended up buying the smart ads version of the Gizmondo and saved 100 pounds, actually pretty smart, to be honest with you, because they actually never ended up having it, because this thing didn't live long enough to see any ads on it. They also had a version in the U.S., the, the non-smart ads versions retailed for $400 U.S., and the version with the smart ads retailed for $229 uh, U.S. dollars. Now, you ask yourself, I don't remember seeing this thing in retail stores in the States. Well, that's true. It never really hit the U.S. stores, necessarily. It retailed on the Gizmondo website, and also at like, small kiosks around different malls in the U.S., so it was very limited. Uh, Gizmondo and, and Tiger Telematics did not advertise this thing very well, so by the time it hit the States... Uh, no one really knew about it, and it retailed for so much. I mean, why would you end up getting this? Uh, and people didn't know necessarily what it was. Uh, it does have a 2.8-inch screen, is it, um, which is cool. Uh, it's 320 pixels by 240 pixels, which is neat. Uh, it's got, as far as RAM storage, it's got 64 megabytes of RAM. And they're actually going to release a widescreen Gizmondo as well, a release in 2006. It was going to have a wider screen and, you know, bigger... But it was stupid because they actually, when Gizmondo or T Tiger announced that, they announced it during the U.S. launch of this one. So people were not only that knew about it, they'd say, okay, we'll just wait for the bigger screen. And that thing was never released. In 2008, uh, Carl Freer actually announced the Gizmondo 2. Uh, and they were going to release launch that in 2008. And it still hasn't been launched. There's still the website that was launched at the time is no longer around. So my guess is they're not going to launch the Gizmondo 2. Uh, but yeah, definitely kind of an interesting system. A lot of history behind it. It didn't sell very well. Uh, less than 25,000 of these things were ever made, so like I mentioned before. But hope you guys enjoyed the review. It's a very cool-looking device, a very futuristic-looking. I wish it did do video. However, you know, what can you say? It's 2005, and it was pretty well advanced. And considering this thing was competing against Sony and Nintendo, you know, no wonder it didn't do very well. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. hope you guys learned a thing or two. Thanks for subscribing. Take care. Peace.